troop types in Call of Dragon are very distinct from one another. Some are ranged, some are melee, some are fast, some are slow. It can get kind of overwhelming for a new player, especially when asking, what troop should I even train first? Hey what's up everybody, it's Plato Gaming here and this series of videos is going to help you understand exactly what each troop type is, the pros, the cons, everything about them so you can decide if you want to train those troops or not. Today's video is going to be specifically about mages. Mages are the most popular troop type that I've seen so far. I kind of call them the blue collar workers of Call of Dragons just being the backbone of a murder ball. Their main role is to be a consistent source of damage, DPS, firing away at either the front line or the back line from a very long distance, just being sure that there is damage being put onto the enemies at all times. So let's go over the pros and cons of mages. The pros of mages is that they have the longest range troop type in the game. So you could fight from a safe distance, you could fight from across the water. There's a lot of things that you can do with mages and in terms of maneuvering them in a specific spot due to their long range. The second pro is that they have a lot of damage. Being the backbone of said army composition, they provide that consistent damage on, and because of that, they're a consistent source of merits as well. Finally, mages have really, really strong commanders such as Lilia, Waldir, Valen. These commanders do a ton of damage, making them a very viable choice. The cons to mages, however, is that you are very immobile. So if you're getting chased down by a cav march or your murder ball is moving and you're late to the marker, you are going to get run down and destroyed. Another con to mages is that they are very, very weak in most behemoth raids. Most behemoths actually have a lot of magic resistance or magic defense, meaning that the mage DPS or the mage damage to these behemoths are actually lower compared to their archer counterparts. To the point where mages are usually found within the bottom of the DPS rankings, meaning that you might not be the highest priority march when it comes to getting people into those elite raids and such. So those were the pros and cons of mages, but who should be going mages? Mages are actually a universal troop type where I'd recommend low spenders free to play to go mages. I could also recommend high spenders krakens to go mages because they are that range troop type that everyone can go. I'd recommend this troop type specifically to low spender free to play though because it being the longest range troop type, it allows you to play really safely. The thing about low spender free to play is that you do not want to be tanking damage, especially from whales. As a ranged march, especially a mage march being the longest range, you can play from a safe distance, getting those merits and trading somewhat evenly, hopefully, just peppering them with damage from afar. If you were to go with mages, my preferred faction would probably be the League of Order. This is because their flying troop type celestials are also a mage, meaning that you'll ha be having two buildings train mages for you. Another reason why the League of Order is a good choice if you want to go mages is because of the legion magic defense. As I said, mages are the longest ranged unit, meaning that the only other unit type that could hit you if you're in position are other mages. The Legion Magic Defense will allow you to have more defense against those mages attacks. For the League of Order, mages are called Vestals and they have a special ability that allows them to increase the HP of nearby friendly legions. The Celestials, over time, they gain more attack. For the Spring Wardens, the mages here are actually called Longleaf Trenants and they increase the defense of surrounding friendly legions. For Wildenberg, their mages are called Satyr Witches, and they increase the attack of surrounding friendly units. So out of all the mages, health is actually the stat that you want the most, meaning Vestals have the best ability. All right, now let's look at the mage commanders in the game, because I think this is one of the biggest benefits of going mages, is the amount of commanders that they have and how accessible they are. So Lilia is actually the VIP commander, which you can buy from the VIP packs. When you unlock a VIP level, for example, 
I believe it starts from VIP, VIP 1 all the way to VIP 9. You can fully max the commander with, I think it's around, it's a couple hundred dollars. But in terms of the amount of sculptures you get per dollar, this is actually the best you can get. And Lily is a really strong commander as well, where she does a lot of skill damage and she also does AoE damage with her skills. She also has HP, extra attack, extra scorch, and scorch is like this damage over time effect. So a lot of good stuff with Lilia. You also have Valen, which is another good commander, another AoE commander, where he inflicts his freeze you to reduce the enemy march speed, which is really, really good. Considering that with mages, you wanna make sure that you keep them as far away as possible. You have Waltier, which is probably one of the best epic commanders in the game, um, and he also does a lot of damage. You also have Alduin, and he's also a very, very good commander. We're doing continuous damage. Um, as you can tell, like these mages just are all about the skill damage and making doing as much damage as possible. You have Atheist. Um, he, Atheist is the magic flying commander. I've personally never used him, so I can't say much about him, but. I think he's pretty decent. I've seen a lot of people use Atheist with Thea um, as the pair with the Celestials. All of these commanders are available through the gold keys. And I've actually gotten a solid amount of Waldeers where I was able to max him. I've got a solid amount of Valens where I was able to... Let's see how much I invested into Valen actually. I've invested 113 Legendary Hero Tokens, but 267 of them were actually from chests. Valen's also available through the daily, so there's just a lot of ways to mage commanders. Alright, now let's go over their artifacts. Mage commander artifacts are also pretty good. The best purple artifact would be the magic bomb. This is actually the best artifact that I have. I have not gotten lucky with mage artifacts in terms of legendaries, but the magic bomb is pretty good. So what the magic bomb allows you to do is you throw a bomb on somebody and it has an AoE circle allowing you to hit and damage targets around in that AoE. Magic Bomb does give you unit attack and legion attack when you start it up and bring it up to level 40. Another good artifact for mages is Staff of Spring. It essentially gives you a lot of unit HP, legion HP, and it gives you healing factors. So it makes your unit tanky and it allows you to heal a unit on the field. As for legendaries, we'll have to go into the tavern for this. The Tear of Auburn is a supportive artifact, which gives you a circle AoE heal. But the main damage artifact is actually the Phoenix Eye. It allows you to select a place on the map, and there will be an AoE circle in that place in the map after a period of time. Those are the artifacts for mages. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned something about mages. I will be continuing to make more videos about the other troop types and as well as other guide videos for Call of Dragons. So if you like Call of Dragons content, be sure to subscribe, like the videos, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.